bright blue clear skies and 61 degrees here in Texas. The weather is very quiet. And looking at the surface map, it just doesn't get any more quiet than this. You can see there's high pressure covering the entire country. Only a few spots getting some weather. You can see up there in northern Maine, one degree at Caribou with a strong northwest wind. And that's due to that outgoing occlusion that's way up there over the Canadian Maritimes. The winds are gusting a little bit in the northern plains. Minnesota there getting gusts up to 30 at Minneapolis. Across the high plains, we have a lee side trough in its typical position there in eastern Colorado. Plateau high over Utah and western Colorado. And you know what that means? Mild days and cold nights, of course. And the weather up in Washington looks a little bit unsettled. Looks like maybe a trace of a frontal boundary in the Columbia River Basin with slightly warmer conditions to the south and unsettled weather up to the north. Possibly some isentropic lift established in that area. Now one area where there really is some weather going on is down to the south. Check out Mexico. That old cold front has barreled southward into the Bay of Campeche, and you can see the gap winds established there through that break in the mountains. Gusting to 38 there on the coast there and on the other side, I don't know if you can see that, but it's 93 degrees due to adiabatic downslope warming. Let's see if we can pull that up on the Aviation Weather Center plot. Well, we definitely have a lack of stations there, but that 93 degrees right there, that's going to be due to some downslope warming and very likely some strong winds right through that region. And then further up into the Mexico City region, we can see some evidence of the tail of the frontal boundary right through that area, a little bit of convergence. You can see the easterly winds just east of that boundary, and on the other side, some very warm conditions with lots of low 80s and even 88 right there at uh, Cuernavaca. Now for a look at the satellite imagery in that area, I'm going to run an animation. What you're going to see is the main cold front right there, the gap wind area right in that region there, so you're going to see the flow, low, low clouds, stratocumulus going right through that gap, and then this is the upslope stratocumulus against the eastern mountain range. And then we have the plateau area further out to the west. And then buried in this stuff behind the front, a few gravity waves just moving southward. So let's run that animation. And there it is. This will start out once again right around dawn. So we switch over from IR to visible, and those gap winds really get going. Probably a good day to fly a kite in that region. And then another area where we have very interesting weather going on is Japan. Now this is looking at the map on Monday evening local time. And you can see it's 70 degrees right there, contrasting with... 60 and east winds to the north and much colder up towards the Seoul, Korea area. This is Korea, by the way. This is Japan. That's the main island of Honshu. This is, I think, uh, Shikoku and this is Kyushu. These are the Japanese islands right there. So what's happening actually is we've got a warm front. I think that's going to be roughly kind of like that. And then the main surface cyclone located out in this area right here. So that's roughly the setup. So lots of warm air down in Japan. So if we roll that forward, you can see the winds really starting to pick up there, gusting up to 25, even 30 knots. Actually, that's, that's a gust to 35. Meanwhile, the surface cyclone is now in the straits. You can see the winds have turned around to the south there in Korea, and there it is, a wind shift in Japan with the surface cyclone just to the north. Got that wind shift there, winds coming out of the northwest. And as we get towards dawn, you can see the front located right there. Very strong front, 40s back here, contrasting with mid-60s out ahead of it. 
Now, that doesn't look very impressive to those of us in the U.S., but for Japan, that's definitely a very strong front. You can see the winds back there gusting to 30. And this is how things progress through Tuesday morning. In other words, last night, our time. Front making headway towards Osaka and very gusty winds. Front located right there now. And it's continuing to press eastward. And there's a video I found on YouTube of that wind that they got earlier today. And here's how that satellite image looked like when that front was coming through western Japan. We can zoom in a little bit and uh, definitely looks uh, unstable back there, cold air advection pattern. And then further out in Korea, also lots of cold air advection, very unstable. And I suspect when we get the satellite imagery for this evening, which is going to be Wednesday morning their time, we're probably going to see a lot of snow cover across Korea. And here's what it looked like on the GFS forecast panels. Korea located right there. Western Japan right there. And the frontal system starting to pull out of Korea. So we go forward. You can see the main low is out there in the East Sea. The main cold front coming through Western Japan. And it just continues moving eastward. And that brings us up to the current time right there. So already it's cleared Japan. The country is under the strong cold air advection region. And this high pressure area, you're going to see that move in right behind it. And there it goes, building in over Japan. So tomorrow is going to be a fair cold day. And then we'll see that warm air advection get started on the other side of that high right there. And a quick look at Europe. I always get complaints that we never look at Europe. So let's do that very quickly. Well, we've got high pressure covering the continent. A little weak low off of the Bay of Biscay that's going to be moving towards southwestern England. And then just running this forward. Looks like maybe a new cold front coming out of Scandinavia way up there towards the north. Because this entire region is a northwesterly gradient. So that's going to be bringing down some cooler air from the northern parts of the North Atlantic. Passing Norway Wednesday, and then, yeah, there it comes right there, a little bit of cyclogenesis in Denmark, and this is going to be a little shot of cold air working southward around Thursday, and you can see that pressing on down south into Germany, a few rain showers, cold rain out ahead of it, and that pretty much clears Germany by Friday. And there it goes. That high pressure over the UK will bring some of the air westward into France. It's going to continue moving south. Looks like some strong upslope on the western mountains of Norway right there. Very strong humid flow producing snow in that region. And then getting towards the weekend. Looks pretty nice in most areas, except up in Norway. However, wow, look at that little system coming together in Finland. Yeah, it looks like the main frontal boundary located kind of like that. Uh, that's a baroclinic low. This is a barotropic occluded system off of Norway. And then looks like maybe a warm front kind of like that. But yeah, this thing is coming together 984 millibars on Saturday. And you can see that sweeping eastward. So it looks like a very blustery day in St. Petersburg down to Estonia. Yeah, look at that powerful system. Wow. So I would not want to be in that part of, well... <laughs> As a weather hobbyist, yes, I would want to be there. But anyway, yeah, that's going to sweep eastward. But that's not going to affect Germany very much. You can see on the tail end, it moves into northern Poland, northern Germany, but it's already starting to stall out right there. And a little piece of cold air may be coming south around Monday or Tuesday. But overall, very stagnant weather elsewhere in Europe. So let's check out the U.S., because it is getting to be spring. It is March. So we're heading into storm season, and we're going to have to start watching out for that. I will let you know that we're going to be doing some special 
weather casts. We're going to do some special severe weather mesoanalysis type things on certain severe weather days. So whenever that comes up, we'll try to figure something out. Anyway, yeah, not much going on except for that little frontal wave down there off of Florida. That's going to produce some storms there in Georgia and South Carolina for later tonight into Wednesday. And that'll gradually move off to sea. Now, we're starting to get the return flow right there. You can see the high right there. So the axis of that high right there. And then on the west side, that's where we develop the return flow, the warm air advection, and the moisture return. And that gets started there in Texas, starts bringing up some moisture around midweek. And as we get cyclogenesis with the next system coming out of the Pacific, that will probably set up a dry line, maybe a front and maybe a warm front, kind of like that. So we're going to keep our eye on Oklahoma and Kansas for Thursday night into Friday. So the GFS putting out some thunderstorms in that region. So we'll take a closer look at that tomorrow. And then it will gradually fade away to the southeast. There's the frontal wave off the Texas coast. You can see the cold air advection coming back in there, cooling things down over the weekend. And meanwhile, out to the west, there's a new powerful system coming into Northern California for Friday night into Saturday. You can see that sweeping inland. So we're going to get high winds, some snows in the Sierra Nevadas, and some more gusty, turbulent weather to look at. And that's going to move across the Great Basin Saturday. Little compact, powerful system. And then that should emerge on the other side of the Rockies around Sunday. And there it is. And it looks like kind of a dry, high plain system. Not really doing much. Then wave number two comes through around Monday or Tuesday, and that's going to have a little bit more effect, but mostly in the northern plains around next Tuesday. Now, that does look to be a very powerful system. This is capable of producing blizzard conditions in North Dakota, so this will bear watching. The fronts, if you're curious... They're going to be looking kind of like that right there. And then we have the occlusion up to the north. And this does tend to be the most likely area for blizzard conditions back behind the surface cyclone. So anyway, that'll pull off to the northeast. And likely by the weekend, we're going to get a better idea what that's going to do. Some storms out ahead of it on the tail end right there in Texas for midweek. And then more weather for California. And we'll just check things out later next week and that's all i have for this edition of forecast lab thank you for joining and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow take care bye-bye